millions of butterflies were in Southern California, and they were all flying around this migration of monarch butterflies. I've never seen anything like it. And I'm not the type of person that like spiritualizes nature. Like I just like you go on a hike and see a butterfly. Why would you do anything? I don't. Like it's not me. But this was real. It's like man, it just felt like something was going on in the middle of a pandemic. You go outside and there's these butterflies everywhere. And just so you know. Uh, speaking of hiding place, a butterfly is not a caterpillar with wings. A butterfly is not a caterpillar with wings. It's a completely new creation. It puts itself in a hiding place, a cocoon, otherwise known as a chrysalis if you got an A in science. It puts itself in a hiding place. Puts itself. Because it knows without the hiding place, it can't be transformed into a butterfly. So a caterpillar cannot be afraid of the hiding place, or it will never be able to fly. So the caterpillar puts itself in a hiding place. And we, a lot of scientists don't know what actually happens in it, because they've been having a hard time studying what happens inside this cocoon, this chrysalis, inside this hiding place. But they do know this, the caterpillar actually dies. It dies, like it melts, and it dies. And there's just enough, a remnant, if you will, for something to be reaching. It's crazy. And it becomes a butterfly inside this hiding place. It is not a cow. It is transformed into a butterfly. And the Lord, as I was praying this morning, thinking about this, felt like your transformation is your transportation to the promises of God. Not your desires, not your dreams, not even your work, your hard work partners with it, but you're allowing the Holy Spirit to transform it. And then there comes this moment where it's time to break out of the hiding place. We're seeing the spirit break out. So then now, the spirit has to break you out of the hiding place. Watch this, okay? So the, the spirit is, uh, or the butterfly starts to struggle to get out. And I was reading this thing about butterflies. If you had compassion on the butterfly and took some scissors to cut it out because it was struggling, it wouldn't be able to fly. Mm -hmm. Because in the struggle to get out, these crazy juices flow through its wings and the struggle makes it strong enough to be able to fly. But then watch this, now that it's flying, a butterfly does not choose where it wants to go. It does not choose where it wants to go. It relies on the wind and wherever the wind goes, it goes. Wherever the wind goes, it goes. Uh, what is the most popular verse you can think of in the Bible? John 3.16. Thank you, honey. We all know that, whether you're Christian or not. We can all recite John 3.16. John 3.16. For God so loved the world, he gave his one only son. For those that are okay, you guys don't know that. I don't know. But you know, most people don't know the verse, eight verses before that, that Jesus said before that. John chapter 3, verse 8. And he's talking to a religious leader, and he says, The wind goes and it comes. You don't know where it's going or where it's coming from. It chooses where it wants to go. So it is with people who are born of the Spirit. He literally says, how does it, what does it mean to be a, a Christian? He's describing what it means to be a Christian. And he says, you know how the wind goes wherever it wants to and doesn't know where it's going from, no one knows? So it is with people who are born of the Spirit. The wind of the, when the church started, what showed up? The wind of God's Spirit. And what the Lord told me to tell you is that if the butterfly was heavy, the wind couldn't take it anywhere. And when I tell you the promises of God are coming, I'm telling you the wind is showing up to take you there. Mm. What are you weighed down with? That's why we're talking about sin right now in this moment and forgiveness of sin. Because Hebrews 12 says, let go of every weight and sin that slows us down. We're not dealing with sin because God is mad. God loves you just the way you are, but you're too heavy to take flight, so we got to deal with it. We're not dealing with it because God's mad. But sometimes in church culture, we don't deal with it at all. And then you sit and hear that the promises of God are coming. And why not you? Because the wind showed up to take you to the blessing. And you're weighed down. And so repentance of sin is to get rid of the weight so that when the wind shows up, you just start flapping your little butterfly wings that were made in the hiding place. And if the wind goes left, you go left. The wind of God's spirit. And some of y'all blowing on your own dream. <laughs> Breath all hot, struggling, 
collapse around these people, just huffing and puffing. And God's like, no, the wind of God's spirit will take you to his promise. So we're waiting for the blessing of God's. I'm not sending the blessing, I'm sending the wind. That's why we're building our lives on God's word. Because it says in the book of God, in the, in the book of Matthew, that when the wind shows up and the storm comes up, we want your house to be able to stand. This is prophesied storms that water the ground that they were in. And so right now I have this moment where I feel like God is saying, some people are living their life with faith. You believe in Jesus, but you're living your life heavy. You're not addressing those things that you know. It's time to get forgiveness for them. And forgiveness comes before change. And so you can bring that thing to God and you can come to his presence and say, Lord, I have some sin in my life that I haven't repented of, which means to change after being with. So once you're with God, you can go, man, God accepts me like this. Now I want to be with him and I want him to teach me and grow me so I can get ready. And I feel like God is saying, somebody needs to leave here lighter. Lighter. I don't know when the wind's coming over what your personal promise is, but you got to leave here lighter. Right? God will not be happy. You'll be like, God's already happy. Jesus satisfied that for God on the cross. So what I'm asking you is, do you want to repent of your sin so you can live life lighter? And have Jesus take that sin. The Bible says he bore our transgressions and our iniquities. This is the gospel. When he was pierced, it says he was pierced for our transgressions. What does that mean? The things you do outwardly. Blood came out of Jesus for the things that come out of you. And it says he was bruised for our iniquities. What is a bruise? Blood under the skin. So Jesus paid the price of the things that are still in you that you didn't even have the chance to do. It's for, you're forgiven for all of it. All you have to do is come into his presence, repent, and say, God, I want your grace. I want your love. I want your transformative power working in my life. Does anybody want to do that? That's following Jesus. I want you to yes. lift your hands to heavens right now if you want to do that. One, two, three. Hands going up everywhere. Come on, lift your hands high. Come on, keep cheering, Mom. This is incredible. The transformative power of God is coming into your life. Thank bringing you. Bringing out transformation Jesus. and change. Jesus says, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Somebody's leaving here lighter today. We're going to pray for you. Father in heaven, we thank you for sending Jesus. We thank you that forgiveness makes us lighter. Because you're preparing us to fly into our destinies to use that proverbial statement, God. And so we thank you. We're grateful for what Jesus did on the cross. Because of that great sacrifice, we can have forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.